Playing for a dream ticket, Anita Graham, a legal secretary from Birmingham. Michael Lloyd, a warehouse manager from Warrington. And from Bromley, Martin Broderick, who works in advertising. So let's meet the star of Wipeout, Bob Monkhouse. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you kindly, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Wipeout. And to those of you at home who love our Wipeout puzzles, good show. And to that boxer friend of mine who always watches, good dog. <laughs> so every time I come on TV, he wags his tail and he runs over the set and then he... I don't think we need to go into that. Let's play one. <laughs> A legal secretary. Yes, that's right. You work for a nice lawyer. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you had to think for a moment. You wouldn't want to work for my lawyer. He's lost more cases than British Airways. <laughs> and, uh, before you were a warehouse manager, what, what, what else have you done? I was pro golfer for a few years, Bob. Really? Yeah. Oh. Mike, I have to tell you that I have a unique distinction in golf. Mm? A hole in nothing. <laughs> I missed the ball and sunk the divot. <laughs> so one of you nice people is going to play for a dream destination before this half hour is over. The best way to explain how this game works is to just play it for you. So first, round one. And coming up on your screens is the title of the first grid. There it is, Creature Homes. Which of the answers we're going to give you are the names given to the homes of animals or birds? Okay, there are 16 possible answers to this question. 11 are true answers. Five are not true at all. Let's reveal all those answers, shall we, on the big screen? The computer puts up all those tricky, tricky words. As I say, there are 11 real names of homes, of creatures, or birds. Rich pickings if you pick well, because each correct answer is worth 50 pounds to put in your bank. But choose a wrong answer, and all the money you've accumulated will be wiped out. Hence the title, Wipeout. Before we came on, our contestants drew their lucky lots. So, uh, who goes first? I do. Oh, yes. right you are. That's lovely, Martine. Would you like, you like to pick a home of an animal or bird? Yes, I'll go for Nest. Nest sounds like a pretty good <laughs> guess. Okay, <laughs> Nest, please, for Martine. And there it is, a nice little green tick, and 50 pounds goes into your bank on the front of your desk. Thank you. Next choice. I'll go for Eerie. Eerie, yes. It seems to me... I've seen one of those at the top of a mountain uh, with an eagle <laughs> sitting in it. Eerie. Yes, that's very good indeed. Now, £100 is to your credit. Will you play on? Yes, I'll go for Warren. Warren. Mm. That sounds like a safe bet, too. I seem to have come across <laughs> a few of those at the top of my garden in Bedfordshire. Warren. Yes, that's where the bunnies dwell. Will you pass or play on? I'm going to pass now, yes. Pass over to Anita. Anita, you've had a long, hard look at that <laughs> grid. Give me a home of a bird or an animal that you see up there. Um, I'll try Dre. Dre. Now, that has a familiar ring. I think you're pretty <laughs> safe with it. Does a squirrel live in a Dre? A squirrel does. And the squirrel's worth 50 quid to you in the bank? I'll try Set. Set. Yes, it seems to me I associate that, I think, with... Badger. Yeah, yeah. me too. Set. Yes, a badger's set is absolutely right. You now have £100 to your credit. Um, I'll try knave. Knave. N-A-V-E. The word is knave. Alas, <laughs> Anita, it's part of a church. Not a place where <laughs> many okay. animals dwell, unless you've got a very dirty church. <laughs> uh, Mike, here's your first chance to pick from the board. There are six correct answers on the grid, four wipeouts. Um... I'll go for Rookery, please, Bob. You like Rookery Nook? OK, a Rookery, please, for our friend Mike. Yes, you're right. Rookery is right. It's where you find a penguin. Of course it is. Well, I'm, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you pick up a penguin. Right. I'll uh, pass, please, You'll Bob. pass straight Thank over you. to you again, okay. Martin, with £150 oh. to gamble. OK, I'll go for Buyer. Buyer. Buyer says uh, Martine, buyer is a place where an animal or bird dwells. Buyer? You're absolutely right. The buyer is where you find the cattle. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to pass. You're going to pass back to <laughs> yeah. Anita, who has nothing to lose at the moment. No. I'll try a halt. Okay. Halt, please. Yes, absolutely right. A halt. 
Everyone approves of that. That's where the otters live right. in Holt. Yes, it's otter in there and colder outside. Oh, sorry about that. 50 pounds in the bank for you, Anita. Do you want to make it 100? Uh, no, I'll pass, thank pass you. Pass again. Mike, you're back no. on the hot seat with 50 pounds um. to lose if you guess wrong. <laughs> uh, there are four wipeouts on the grid and three correct answers. Certainly a guess, Bob. We'll go for the obvious Earth. Earth! <laughs> That's where the fox is. It is Earth. You have £100 in the bank. <laughs> I'm certainly going to pass, Bob. Going to pass. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> there are only two correct answers up there, Martine. You're very jolly about that. <laughs> <laughs> Your courage itself. There's oh. four wipeouts to avoid, OK, darling. I'll try four cope, because that's what I feel I'm doing right now. <laughs> a cope? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It's a kind of okay. cloak, and sometimes bishops or uh, clergy wear them. So I'm afraid you have nothing in the bank now. You have 50 pounds in the bank, Anita. Risk it. Go ahead. Oh. Yes. Two correct answers <laughs> up there, and now only three wipeouts. Right. I'll take a guess and go for a dram. Is a dram a place where we'd find some little creature nesting? No, oh, it isn't. A dram is a uh, wee dram. <laughs> if you might have a small drink of whiskey. Up in Scotland, they're going, oh, and Anita, <laughs> how could you do that? £100, Mike. You want to keep that £100, and it's a 50-50 chance for you. Michael, there are two correct answers on the grid. There are yep. two wipeouts. Creature homes. Again, I guess, but we'll go for hold. Hold! <laughs> Storage area on a plane or on a ship <laughs> is a hold, but yeah. uh, you won't find any animals in it unless somebody's going to get fired if you do. Well, Martin, Martin, we have only one wipeout out yeah. there, one piece of nonsense, and two <laughs> real homes for animals or birds. Okay, I'll try for lodge. Lodge. Mm. I think you're about to bank fifty quid. I get that feeling in my water. <laughs> lodge. <Hooray. Yes. laughs> the lodge is where you would find a beaver. Now, up to you whether you want to make that fifty pounds into a hundred by taking a 50-50 chance on those two remaining answers. No, I'll pass. You'll pass. <laughs> and these are your chance to put 50 pounds back in your bank. Right, nothing to lose. I'll try form. If form is right, you get 50 pounds in the bank. If you're wrong, well, you'll stay where you are. Form, please. Yes, it's a hare's bed. If you find, if you find a hare in your bed, that is very bad form. <laughs> At the moment, oh, you can see Mike, I'm afraid, is still flat on zero. But 50 and 50 belong to Anita and Martine. And the title of the second grid is coming up now on your screen. Real people. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> We're all real people. I'll read out what it says. Many people's names have passed into common usage, either as expressions or names for something else. So which of these expressions has put up the answers? All these names are derived from people who really did live. Which of these people are just invented by folklore or whatever, and which of them really did live? Okay, Martine, you're the one to lead on this one. Okay. Um, first one will be Geronimo. Geronimo really did live. Yeah. Well, let's leap out of the aeroplane, pull our ripcord and shout, Geronimo! Yes, thank you very much, Geronimo, certainly Apache Indian chief. Yes. Um, second one, I'll go for the Alexander Technique. The Alexander Technique? Was it named after a real person? Let's find out. The Alexander Technique. It was indeed a fellow called Alexander, E.F.M. Alexander, an Australian actor. Oh. There are nine real answers up there. Do you want to carry on? I'll have, uh, I'll go for Gordon Bennett. Gordon Bennett. <laughs> Gordon Bennett. <laughs> Did he really exist? Yeah, he did. He was James Gordon Bennett II, the editor of the New York Herald. Why he's passed into exclamations, exclamations of astonishment. I do not know. You now have 200 pounds in the bank. There are eight correct answers still up there. Okay, you... I'm going to pass. <laughs> okay. All right, Martin, that is your right to do. Back to our legal secretary, Anita. 50 pounds <clears> in the bank. Uh, five wipeouts still on the grid. I'll have Hobson's Choice. Hobson's Choice, when you have no alternative, you have to choose Hobson's Choice. Yes, named after a guy called, obviously, Choice. No, it was, <laughs> it was a fella called Hobson and uh, a very nice bloke called Hobson who was a horse hirer. Thomas Hobson, he used to leave you no choice at all, just one horse, you know, he wouldn't show you the rest of them. Are you going to pass or play on? I'll take a chance. I'll have Sweet Fanny Adams. Sweet Fanny Adams. <laughs> 
I hope you will not have that amount in the bank after we have revealed whether or not a real person was called Sweet Fanny Adams. She was a young girl murdered in 1812. Isn't that strange? You now have 150 pounds to your credit. Pass or play? I'll pass, please. Pass over to you. Mike, you're coming from nowhere. <laughs> Nothing to lose. Marvelous. There are um, six correct answers up there. But there are also five wipeouts. Um, I think I'll try Granny Smith, please, Bob. Granny Smith. There's nothing I like to sink my teeth into more. I'm sure Grandpa, <laughs> Grandpa Smith felt the same way. Granny Smith! Well done. <laughs> Maria Ann Smith, will you play or pass? I'll pass the thing, Bob. You'll pass over. <laughs> Martin, you have 200 pounds to lose. Don't lose it. You have a 50-50 oh, chance. Five correct answers, five wipeouts. What's your pick? Yes, OK. I don't know who he is, but I'll go for John Dory. <laughs> John Dory! Oh! Oh, Martin. <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> I'm afraid it's a fish, sometimes called a dorado, but it's, uh, it ain't no person. Okay. All right, we're back with you, Anita. £150 to play with. Five correct answers, five to four. Incorrect. I'll try Sally Lunn. Sally Lunn. That's a very famous name for a bun or a cake of some kind, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. But did it, uh, did it get its name from a real person? Sally Lunn, are you there? Yes, Sally Lunn. You have £200 as a result of Sally Lunn. Now... Four correct answers against four wipeouts. Will you play or pass? I'll pass, please. Pass over to you, Mike. You have 50 pounds to risk. All right, Bob. Um, I think I'll try Nosy Parker. Nosy Parker. Archbishop Matthew Parker had a big nose. And he couldn't yeah. keep it out of anyone's That's affairs. Right. <laughs> and I'm going to pass, Bob. You're going to pass over to Martin? <laughs> oh, dear. Um, OK, Jack Spratt. Jack Spratt, who could eat no fat. His wife could eat no lean. And so between the three of us... Ooh, are you real or are you fictitious, Jack Spratt? Oh, no! Oh, no, no, he's just a rhyme. Now, three false answers, three okay. real ones. Try not to pick a wipeout. Jimmy Riddle. I tried very carefully here, because it is, after all, a form of rhyming slang, but it didn't come about because there's a real person called Jimmy Riddle. If it ain't no Jimmy Riddle, you have lost, nearly said the wrong word there, 200 pounds in the back. Jimmy Riddle. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, you went for a Burton, but Burton isn't up there. Mike, you have £100 to risk. I think I'm going to go for Joe Bloggs, please. Bob? Joe Bloggs. Oh. He's dead, so your 100 disappears. We have three contestants with no money whatsoever. <laughs> so okay. so it's... They're doing well. <laughs> isn't it great? I'm, so, I'm glad you're so jolly about it. There's still 150 quid's worth of answers up there and only one wipeout. Martine, try to avoid the wipeout. Yes, it? yes. Well, I've done well so far. I think I've picked all of those. Um, I'll go for the real McCoy. The real McCoy? Yes. OK, let's find out whether he really was the real McCoy. Hooray! Well <laughs> done. You should have given me more than 50. You should have got 100 there because there were two real McCoys. Oh. There was a fellow called Boxer Kid McCoy and a cattle baron called Joseph McCoy. So you should have scored double, but you didn't. However, of the three remaining answers, one is a wipeout. Yeah. I'm going to pass. Oh, right you are. <laughs> Anita, your 50 pounds if you pick right. I'll try Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam. Well, let's hope that wonderful symbol of the USA was a real guy. Uncle Sam. <laughs> Yes, there really was an Uncle Sam, and he was a much-loved meat wholesaler called Samuel Wilson. And he was a great patriot of his day. You have 50 quid in the bank, play or pass? I'll pass, please. Pass over to you. Mike, your chance to put the 50 quid in. There's yep. still one right answer, one wrong answer. How <laughs> can you pick the one that you want? Uh. Was there a real Aunt Sally? Was there a real Jack Russell? I'm hoping there was a real Aunt Sally, Bob. You're hoping there was a real Aunt Sally. If there was a real Aunt Sally, you'd get your 50 quid. You'd be level pegging with the two ladies on the game. If not, you're still at zero. Aunt Sally, did you exist? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Then you're out, I'm afraid. Oh, dear, what a shame. Yeah, you know, um, that's the end of this round. And I, I'm terribly sorry to have to say goodbye to anybody. But uh, at least, Mike, you can say that you finished first. <laughs> <laughs> We have a, a, a card is being held up to tell me that your consolation prize is a paper. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> so enjoy the paperweight. Thanks very Thanks, much Bob. indeed. Thank you.